unravel um, was something that was introduced to me six months ago. And I feel like since we've, we've really started diving in to that particular tool and technology, it's been um, really great for us. We've made a lot of progressive improvements initially within our on-prem Hadoop clusters. And um, now we're in a much better place than where we were initially. Some of the key goals that we were trying to achieve as we went through these different activities uh, included lower capital investment. So you heard me talking earlier about some of those quotes. Um, we we are we had a common um, practice of well, it's our performance has gotten lower. Uh, we haven't we, we don't have any space left. Our memory is maxed. Uh, let's just go out there and buy some more, right? And so um, you do that once. You do that twice, and then people start looking around and saying, is this never ending or what? And on top of that, we want to balance our uh, on-prem investment in, um, in technologies and in, in hardware in particular against what we want to do in the cloud uh, so that we can optimize and get the best of both worlds um, across that world. Cluster efficiency is a big thing. So um, we, we have memory constra constrained clusters. Um, and then we just had inefficient jobs. And one thing that Unravel's really great at is uh, pointing out to you um, whenever you'd like, really. Uh, but um, we were doing it on a weekly basis. The things that were actually um, causing the most pain and suffering across the, the two main clusters that we have within our world. And so um, that generally started the conversation with Suresh and I. Suresh, go get them. Uh, help them understand what needs to be changed. And when they didn't listen, then I came around and virtually twisted their arm. Um, but I think in general, we have really good responses. And now I would say that our development community has even integrated in, in some places where we're, we're best in class and, and or best in company, I should say. They've integrated Unravel directly into their development processes and before they actually take things to production, they, they use that as a final check to make sure that all of their Spark configurations and settings are in good spaces so that we don't get into trouble. Now, Suresh is going to take you later into a little example of small files. Um, so obviously, this is a problem um, with, an, with a Hadoop, Hadoop cluster. If you have these things out there in the world, uh, they cause your cluster to um, have degraded health. And so, um, Unravel was able to help us uh, with some utilities and some of the, the configuration items that they helped us with to detect those small files and then to uh, help us to get those cleaned up. And that had a tremendous amount of impact around space and efficiency and use and everything that goes along with that. So um, the one big thing is, as I talked earlier, when you're talking about your crew, they're always limited. Um, you, you have to get into better adoption practices around these things. And so, again, Iron, Iron Fist, basically me making a bunch of trouble for people who weren't, weren't using the tool, telling them that they needed to be better, um, trying to get Unravel, engage, uh, Unravel uh, embedded in, into our development processes was a key goal of mine to ensure that we were um, heading in the right directions and that we were maximizing our investment that we were making with Unravel as a tool. So that was that was big. Um, and then once again, call out, we wanted to get our Hadoop admins into a really great space, right? Into a better space where they had more time to spend on value added activities. And so the report, um, I'm sorry, the notification processes that Unravel helped us to set up, helped Suresh to essentially let those notifications roll. And then if people weren't responding to them over time, then we basically address them. Uh, but in general, it allows people like Suresh to do more value-added things. 